Welcome back, everybody. Well, here I am, ready to show you the new reference preamplifier that I have selected for my system and going forward. You've seen many people give their opinion about my system throughout the past few weeks. And the majority of the people who visited my lab heard my system with this preamplifier right here. Now it is your turn to find out what preamplifier I have purchased. And let's go over the specifications of this magnificent solid state, yes, my favorite type of preamplification. So without further delays, let's go over the new preamplifier. Welcome back everyone, you know the drill, please subscribe, hit that like button. I'm very excited today because I'm bringing you a new preamplifier, a preamplifier that I have been eyeing for a while. Not much is being said about this preamplifier, but you're going to hear it from me. You're going to get my take on what it feels like to live with this magnificent two chassis preamplifier, which is quite heavy, I must say. This is about 67 pounds for the control unit and about 85 pounds for the power supply. I'm actually a, li a little bit nervous because I feel like the table that I'm using can give out at any moment now because I have over 140 pounds on top of it, okay? So, let me show you what I bought. You are looking at my new pre-amplifier. The Griffin Commander. This is a new territory for Griffin because this is the very first preamplifier they build at this price point of $68,000. Now, you've seen the Pandora preamplifier in the past in my lab. That preamplifier currently MSRPs for around $32,000. So, this is twice, actually, more than twice the money of a Pandora. And let me tell you, it weighs a hell of a lot more than the Pandora, okay? And, of course, it feels just much better built, like a cost no object preamplifier, kind of like what the Boulder 2110 feels like, Darth Zeal preamplifier feels like. This is an elite group of preamplifiers that I have, which, by the way, if you go over to my website, jaysaudiolab.com, you can see my Darzeal right in the back that's up for sale as well as my Boulder 2110 because I don't need to have three preamplifiers at once, okay? okay. I want to concentrate on this commander. I want to understand what it does do and it doesn't do. But for now, let's go over the specifications. Okay, so let's start with the back of the unit. Here you have what I was saying before with regards to preamplifiers, okay? You have multiple XLR inputs, okay? As a matter of fact, we have a total of four XLR inputs. We have one RCA in, we have tape in, and we have, of course, dual XLR outs as well as single-ended out. This is a very nicely laid out preamplifier, I must say. I see enough inputs for anybody. You can actually run you know, you can buy amp your speakers if you want to. You have an additional set of single-ended outputs, which you could use, let's say, for, you know, a set of subs if you wish. Okay. Now, let's move to the power supply unit. The power supply unit has three umbilical cords, okay? So you're going to have one umbilical cord for the left channel to power the left channel. You're going to have one umbilical cord for the right channel. And then the center is to power all the circuitry of the control unit, the display um, and everything else associated with the electronics. Now, one thing to note, as you can see here, you have two analog PSU outs right here, okay? And what that is for is, in the future, Griffin may have a source, maybe a CD player, it may have a, I don't know, another type of electronic perhaps, that you can power another Griffin component with this same power control unit. This power supply has a total of four 
four transformers, two per side. And it has a total of 90,000 microfarads per channel for a total of 180,000 microfarads. Now, you might be wondering, what does that even mean, Jay? Why do we care about microfarads and capacitance? Well, to put it into perspective, this preamplifier, this power supply has more capacitance than a Luxman M900U. Yes, it has more capacitance than a Luxman power amplifier. So think about that. A preamplifier that has more capacitance than one of the best amplifiers I've had the pleasure of owning. I love the way Griffin packages their products. This preamplifier being no exception. You got a beautiful manual with nice texture. You also have some discs that are used to place the commander on top of, okay? The commander comes with spikes already pre-installed. Also, I love the remote, okay? You have a mute button, a display in order to dim the display of the unit. You also have uh, all the inputs. This to me is a remote control that doesn't give you a ton of buttons, but it doesn't need any more buttons, if that makes sense. It's just right. It's got the right amount of buttons to control the unit. Kudos to you, Griffin, for giving us a nicely laid out remote control, which by the way, feels very premium, just like the Boulder and the Darzeal remote controls, okay? Here's one thing that I was shocked by. I was completely taken aback by this. Griffin becomes the very first ultra high-end brand that I have owned that includes their aftermarket power cords with the purchase. So think about this. Most of these components are a hell of a lot of money, right? We know that. And you still have to get out there and buy aftermarket power cords for them. Because, let's face it, anyone who's playing at this level is more than likely going to buy their own power cords, whatever it is that they like, to make their system sound better. See, but Griffin did something that I have never seen any other brand do before. And that is, they included their own Vanta series power cords, which are... I believe $65,000, $7,000 maybe, I could be wrong. MSRP per power cord. This unit utilizes two power cords. It, so it comes fully ready for you. No need to get out there and buy your own power cords and figure out what, where you're gonna spend that money. You don't really need to worry about that. Which is by the way, how the Griffin Apex comes. It, it also comes with aftermarket power cords. Now, some of you may argue, hey, why do I need those power cords? Just give it to me without any power cords and charge less. See, I disagree with that. I disagree with that because I don't want to embark on buying power cords. If Griffin is putting their Vanta series power cords on this unit, that is because they feel that the unit is going to sound that much better. They're maximizing everything this preamplifier has to offer. So I love knowing that Griffin did what nobody else is doing in the ultra high end. I, I applaud you, Griffin. I really do applaud you for doing that. Thank you. That's something that I actually made a video about years ago that I wish the ultra high end brands included aftermarket power cords in order to elevate the performance of their components. See, there might be some of you who are saving to buy a preamplifier like this, right? And now you don't have to worry about having to spend another ten, fifteen thousand dollars on power cords anymore. And by the way, I have already done some trials of this preamplifier with stock power cords and the Vanta series power cords. And yes, the preamplifier sounds better with the Vanta line. That said, what I will be doing is maybe trying this preamplifier with stock power cords and plug it into the strum tank s1000 and see what kind of results i get i think that's going to be quite interesting aesthetically speaking this is just an amazing gorgeous looking component i love the griffin the dragon whatever that's called i just love it it just 
the feel of the preamplifier it just feels so premium, heavy, well constructed, costs no object. And to be sincere, $68,000 is a hell of a deal for this preamplifier. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh my God, that's crazy. Did this guy just say that a $68,000 preamplifier is a hell of a deal? Yes, I did. I've had preamplifiers that cost more. Okay, and this is actually one of the cheapest ultra high end preamplifiers I've owned. And let me tell you, the performance is there. No doubt. You're going to get to hear it soon through my Griffin Apex. And I want to hear your feedback as far as what you think of this preamplifier once I let it settle in and put some hours on it, okay? One real attractive feature that this preamplifier has is the fact that you can level match each input. And what that means is if I'm comparing, let's say, my turntable against streaming, right, against my DAC, I can connect my turntable on input number one and then my DAC on input number two. Level match them so that when I go from input one to two, the volume is not different on both inputs. I can actually hear what's going on as I crank up the volume. I can actually have the same volume for both sources, which is going to allow me to review components. It's going to allow me to do better A and B comparisons. That's one key thing I must say when you're doing A and B comparisons, the volume levels need to be matched. You have to bring them within at least one decibel of each other. You can't have one component be three decibels louder than the other component you're trying to compare it against. It doesn't work that way. They have to be at the same level, same volume level. And this is one real appealing function that this preamplifier brings to the table. Now, if you're asking me, can you give us a little bit about what this preamplifier is doing for you, Jay, sonically? I can definitely share a few things with you, and they are preliminary. The dynamics, <laughs> God, the dynamics on this preamplifier are just absolutely incredible. Incredible dynamics. Also, the control that it has, the, this feeling that is just, it feels like you're detonating a bomb in the room when the bass hits. It is just incredible. The sound stage is big, wide, deep. There's many more attributes that I am sure I will share with you in the future. Anyway, are you all as excited as I am to hear this Griffin Commander team up with my Griffin Apex? I am very excited, I must say, to share this experience with you. A new journey, a new path, if you will, with my system. And I promise you're not going to be disappointed. Comment below. Let me know if you've ever heard a Griffin Commander with an Apex. Tell me what your impressions were. And, of course, do not forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Take care. Talk to you soon.